Ugandan families rely heavily on wood as an energy source for cooking and hot water. The result has been widespread deforestation. The authorities say the country loses up to 90,000 hectares of its forest cover every year. The government wants to reduce logging by connecting more and more people with the national grid. Uganda has an energy shortage, a problem that the private sector could be key to solving. The hope is also that it could serve as a model for other countries in the region. In your own cocoons. Where we stand as a population with only 20.4% access, you realize that the gap is still very big, but that in itself means it's an opportunity for someone to come and fill that gap. And that is why the private investment comes in on board. Uganda's electricity capacity stands at about 800 megawatts. As the economy continues to grow steadily, so do the country's energy requirements by about 8% every year. The potential sources for meeting that demand and ensuring the country remains switched on night and day are solar energy, hydropower and biomass. In this case, sugarcane. More than 7,500 tons are crushed every day here at Kakira, Uganda's biggest sugar manufacturer. In addition to its core product, the factory also generates electricity. The biomass is a byproduct of the manufacturing process. When you manufacture sugar, you, you have a waste product which is called bagasse. That is the fiber in the cane. And before we were burning the fiber and we were just generating enough steam and small electricity for our own factory and uh, our estate consumption. But as technologies improved, we understood that you could actually use this fiber more efficiently and instead of burning it in a low pressure boiler, you now have high pressure boilers. So you could burn the fiber and generate uh, renewable energy. Enough to meet the energy demands of the sugar mill and estate and generate surplus electricity. At full capacity, the factory produces up to 50 megawatts of power. Thanks to the co-generation program, over half that amount is sold to the national grid. At the same time, the company also has a commitment to reforestation. We have a very strong policy in our company to protect the environment. One of the things we must do is encourage planting of trees. Uh, we do it year on year. If you cut down all the trees and make the land barren, I think you will have huge climate changes, which is what's happening in the world today. That's why Kakira has been planting trees along estate roads and where land is not suitable for growing sugarcane. The production of renewable energy also helps to improve the living conditions of Ugandan cane growers. Lasto Wako is one of thousands of farmers who supply the crop to factories in eastern Uganda. A recent rise in demand has changed his life. So far now I have got over 100 acres of sugar cane. I have uh, benefited how about a, a new lorry, Tata Booster 1613. I have uh, bought land, have got uh, around 50 acres of land of, on my own. I have educated my children. The co-generation of renewable energy is a success story for the cane growers, the sugar company, for the forests and the environment, and for the Ugandan people.